What's up everybody? Yamez here with Island Metal Forge. Uh, it's been a while since I've done an electrical video. Um, I felt a bit of, uh, I don't want to say resistance, but lack of interest and, uh, you know, some people brought up some good points about in some areas people aren't allowed to work on their own electrical and this and that and the other thing and, uh, anyway, um, anything electrical you see on my channel, uh, you use with your own common sense. Uh, don't tell them Island Metal Forge told you how to do this. Um, this is just a blah 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 blah. <laughs> anyway, um, I've had a few people ask me about the motor controllers uh, that I used to use in my outdoor shop back when I was outside and it's like I had a vacuum uh, hooked up to this doohickey. Well, I take it apart and rewire it to show you guys how. Um, very simple, very basic. It's, you know, cheap. You could get this whole setup for about 30 bucks um, and you can make it as nice as you want to make it uh, using the different boxes and containers for it. Um, heck, you can even get a remote controlled fan controller. <laughs> That's, you know, set something up nice. Uh, that'd be good for in shop ventilation if you've got a, a shop fan up there in, in the corner and you just want to go beep on beep off. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go down to the anvil. I know it's not, you know, forging work, but I'm using the anvil anyway. And uh, let's show this thing being built so that you guys uh, know what's what. Uh, thank you very much. Check it out. Alrighty. As I was saying, I'm going to show you how to hook up a fan speed controller. Uh, this is used for residential, you know, adjusting the speed of a ceiling fan. Um, it is intended to be used for motors. So, as opposed to a light dimmer, which controls the voltage, a fan controller controls the amperage. So, what you're gonna wanna do is get yourself an outlet, and you have the silver side screws, you have the brass, or the, the gold colored screws. The gold screws are the hot side, and the silver color sides are the neutral. You can also tell that neutral is typically a longer slot than the hot, and the ground is green. So, on the fan controller, just a typical single pole fan controller, you got your green ground there, and then you've got two black wires. One black is the incoming, one black is the uh, output or the load, so you have a line and a load. It doesn't matter which one it is, um, as you'll see when I show you guys how to wire it. Now I'm showing you how to do this bare bones. I, you know, I could get a, a fancy little black box or a little uh, metal box and a cover and, and make it like a contained unit. Uh, but these are about a, a buck or two. Uh, this is, I just had in my scrap pile of electrical stuff. Um, this is about a buck or two at Home Depot. You can get all of this stuff at Home Depot. This is a couple bucks, if that, maybe under a buck. Um, this is, you know, 20 bucks, no more than 30. Just a simple, basic motor controller. All right. Now, as for the cord, you could probably find it laying around. You want a three-prong plug with the three wires off of it because you're controlling a motor. It really should have an equipment ground on it. Um, and on that you have ridges on one side, smooth on the other, and then the center, the, the middle. Uh, the ridges will be the neutral, the smooth side will be the hot, and the center, because it's got a green sheathing, is the ground. Let me uh, get these opened up for you. You can see. All you do is cut a slice in, and you peel back. Just enough for what you're going to use here. Okay, so I'm going to pull back about about four inches or so, eh, maybe a little bit more. Um, using wire strippers, or if you're very careful, you can use a razor knife. I recommend for this using the 10 gauge size um, and just working at it just to pull off the outer sheathing of the ground. Um, So you have it there and all well and good. Um, all right, and then I'm going to 
take the neutral side and I'm going to strip that uh, about so. Now you're going to want to twist it up so that it's a solid piece. Um, you're also going to strip off the hot side, which, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, also twisting that. Now you're going to want to feed this into the box. If you're using a metal box with uh, lock nuts and all that fun stuff, fittings, you can go ahead and uh, toss a fitting on there. This box is made for NM, and since it's just more an example of how to wire something, um, you really don't, I'm gonna really don't need a big old box. Um, we'll strip off the ground. And give me a little bit more of that. Alrighty. Now what I'm gonna do is, you know, just screw in. Oh, and a side note, you could always break the tab on between the hot side, just the hot side, and then put a hot, and then the switch leg or the line side from the switch to one side, and that'll leave one of the outlets constant hot for you, and the other one will be the controlled. But I'm not going to do that right now. This gives me the option of using two different motors. Screw those in because I'm not using them. And you always want to use the screws. You do not want to use the back stabs. Those are no bueno. Alrighty. So, I have here two grounds. That I'm going to twist together. and put to the ground screw. Alrighty, I have two grounds here that I'm going to twist together and take a bit of ground wire, bare copper wire works. Uh, this is all 14 gauge and I am going to splice onto a pigtail for it. This allows me to tuck the wire nut nicely in the back. Get on there. There you go. And I can just clip off the excess. Okay, so that ground is done, and that will hook up to the outlet, and just by putting a hook right there, and hooking it around the screw. Doing this on the anvil is kind of fun. I <laughs> should have cleared off my workbench. Yeah. So the grounds are done. That's the simple part. So I mean it's all simple. Alright, so then I'm going to take one hot, or the hot side of the feed, and splice it into the one of the blacks on the motor controller. Just simple twist the wires, throw a wire nut on it, and the hot is done. Now I'm going to take the switch leg side and give that a twist, put a hook on it, I'm going to put a hook on the neutral as well, the neutral coming from the cord, loop around the screw, the silver screw, <laughs> and ba -ba 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 -ba. tighten that down. 
Uh, a note, you want the loop to go uh, with the turn of the screw so that as you screw it down, it, it pulls it in, not, you know, pushes it out. Um, yeah, so, and then take on the brass side, the, the gold side, the other leg from the motor controller, and clean that up a bit. And get that there. Screwed to that. All right. So, if you can see that, what we have coming from the house, rather from the plug, the neutral to the neutral side of the outlet, the hot from the house going to one leg from the switch, the other leg from the switch going to the hot side of the outlet. The grounds all together. So, then we'll take and jam this all in the box, being careful with the bare wire, making sure that that's not touching any of the screws. And this is the top. So I'm going to put a screw in there. And I believe I dropped a screw. Put a screw in here. And put a screw in here. Alrighty. Now, again, I'm not using a wall plate or anything. Um, I if I actually used one of these regularly in my shop, I would have it in a better box with a cover, you know, really nice and protected from the dust. But this is more of an example to show you how to do this. Um, if you go to your local hardware store, there are much better electrical options than this box, but it can be done with this. Just put a wall plate on it and you're good. And it just has to be a duplex. Ugh single pole wall plate nothing special let <laughs> me get this screwed down and then show you uh, get the motor over here get the um, I'll do it two ways I'll show you with an actual uh, motor if I can find one with a plug already on it <laughs> and uh, with a vacuum which is what I used to use Alrighty, so I grabbed a small little, uh, it's 350 RPMs, it was 130th horsepower, uh, and I also have a small Stinger 2 gallon, 2.5 gallon wet dry vac, uh, just to show you a bit of it. Uh, I have this plugged into this, and this powered. Uh, I put this here so you can see the rotation. And uh, this, when it starts, it starts out full and then goes down. So, we have it full. And then it goes down. Yep. Motor control. And getting something like this, you can put on a fan blade for it, or get, say, a bath fan from uh, Home Depot, you know, just like a ventilation fan, and uh, build a box for it and put it in that, and you've got a homemade motor controlled blower. I'm going to unplug this and show you the vacuum. Alrighty, so the vacuum's a bit louder, so be ready for that headphone wearers. I'll try to adjust the, the volume, uh, but I want you to hear the vacuum going on and slowing down, and uh, yeah.
Yep. And that's just a cheap vacuum from Home Depot. I know full power for that vacuum is way too much airflow uh, for your typical forge. Um, honestly, it'd be great for an incinerator in a, you know, an incinerator barrel <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but anyway, that simple little mechanism can easily be set up for a forge blower. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys all think, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much.